thankful to be here. This is my first time at the Southern New Year's meeting, as I might refer to it. But it's been a blessing, although I've only been here for one service prior to this. It's truly a blessing to be with brethren who I've known some for years, others I've just met. And it's truly a great opportunity to grow as God's children. You know, as we're here at meetings like this, we have this, this great boost of spiritual energy. We're reminded of why it is that we serve our God and our Father in heaven. We have little reason to question our faith. We have little reason to be down and depressed. But you know what? When we're honest with ourselves, there are days that we do feel down, aren't there? There are days we look at life's troubles. It causes us grief. Sometimes it even causes us to question our faith in God. It causes us to wonder about the promises that he's made. Now, it's not something we're proud of. It's not something that makes us happy or joyful. Probably something we don't even want others to know about when we're going through it at times. Recently, back home in Springfield, there was a group of men that were gathered together from the church discussing some very pertinent things. They were very sensitive in, ma in matter. One of the younger brethren there said, you know, many of, of my peers, many of those my age, really struggle to talk to those of you who are older about some of the temptations that we face, some of the struggles that we have. He said the common perception is that those of us who are older, and I'm going to have to start classifying myself that way, although I know many of you may look at me and think no, but I have to. I have a 19-year-old daughter, so that puts me up there a little bit. But their problem, they say, is older brethren just don't understand the struggles and the temptations that they're going through. Or maybe it's that older brethren would be judgmental about them questioning their faith or just dismiss them as too young. Thankfully, one of the other brethren there told him exactly what was going through my mind and others' mind as well. Listen, this isn't unique to your generation. And to those of you who are younger here this morning, the first thing and most important thing I want you to get out of my lesson is don't think that we don't care about you or that we don't understand what you're going through. We've all been there. All too often, those, especially those preachers that stand up here or teachers like myself, we're looked upon as though we we have it easy in our faith, that we don't have any struggles. We look at those who have, have gone through the battle-tested years of faith, and we think that they've got it easy. And so when we begin to question our faith, we think we're all alone. Let me tell you, I've been there. And it's times like this that we need reminded of stories of great faith like we find in 2 Kings chapter 5. There, we're going to read the first four verses, but for brevity, that's all we're going to read. I believe it's a story that you'll be very well familiar with. It says, Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of the master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of the, his leprosy. 
And Naaman went and told his master, saying, Thus and thus says the girl who is from the land of Israel. Again, you know that story very well, don't you? Naaman goes and is told to wash seven times on the Jordan River. Although he initially refuses, he's convinced by his servants to do it, and a tremendous act of faith is brought to fruition when he is cleansed. I'm not talking about Naaman's faith. I'm not even talking about the faith of his servants. I'm talking about the faith that is often overlooked in this story. It's a faith that began with his servant that pleaded with him, or uh, rather, I'm sorry, the young slave girl serving the wife of Naaman. Let's stop and take a closer look at this young girl. We're told that she's an Israelite who had been captured by the Syrian army. She is now far from home. Mother and father are treasured memories, but perhaps she has been enslaved long enough that the thoughts of reunion are long gone from her mind. I have little doubt she is not the only Israelite slave in Syria, maybe not even the only one in Naaman's household. But still, this young girl has many reasons to feel sorry for herself, to maybe even question God's love and the promises that she's been taught in her brief time in Israel. But instead of feeling sorry for herself, instead of dwelling on the struggles in her life, we see a demonstration of faith that is among the greatest in all of God's word as I read it. What makes this so incredible? The Lord himself shines quite a bit of light on this in Luke chapter 4, verse 27, when he says, And my, many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Did you hear that? Go back through the word of God. As I'm reading it, and some of you who are maybe more versed and maybe have studied closer may find differently. But other than when Moses is in his discourse with God at the burning bush, as we refer to it, and then Miriam, after she and Aaron had challenged Moses' place as spokesman to God, or for God, there is no other recording of a leper being cleansed in the word of God. Yes, the word of God and the holy uh, old law gave word of how that one was to uh, make themselves right with God if they were cleansed. But what we see happen with this young girl is very much the definition and the epitome of faith that is described in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. When it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This young girl had never seen a leper cleansed by all accounts that I can read. And yet her faith in God, even while suffering enslavement in a far land, she believed the power of God. Many of us have faced and overcome difficulties in life. Just because that we're older and we're more experienced at facing those difficulties doesn't mean that we don't understand that. July 1997 was a dark and terrible time in my life. My lack of faith culminated in a thankfully fruitless three-hour search of my parents' home for shotgun slugs. You see, I was going to take my life. My life was meaningless to me. It was at that point that my life had begun to unravel because my deepest, darkest secret had begun to become known. First to my parents, and then to others. 
For over 16 years, I had buried it. But I was a victim of multiple rapes by a brother in the church. And it had so severely affected me that I did not believe that I was lovable, that I was worthy of God. My faith was not in Him. Anybody who knew me at the time never had a clue. But as my life began to unravel, what caused me to realize that I was lovable, that my life was meaningful, is my faith in God. There are many today who have gone through some very terrible things. And when those things happen at the hands of men today, we are too quick to blame God and lose our faith. Jesus twice rebuked his disciples. Once in a general sense, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, he says, Why are you fearful, you of little faith? And then Peter, as they're on the water, and Peter has begun walking, but he takes his eyes off of Jesus. He says, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You see, it's at these times we can't stop from believing in God. We may begin to question it, and we may need that injection of the love of our brethren. That's what some of these meetings like this are all about to me, is being reminded that I'm not alone. Old and young, middle-aged, whatever they are, male, female, I have brothers and sisters in Christ, and they have faith that reminds me of why that I need to keep my faith. Back up just a few months from now, September 2021 was another difficult time in my life. Any of you who are friends on Facebook with my wife or with my mother know that I had COVID. And it had reached a point where a couple of different nights I went to bed and as I went to sleep, I thought, I'll never wake up. I was admitted to the hospital and as the nurses and medical tech are trying to get me situated and they're asking me all these questions, it took me a few moments for the one question they asked to fully register. The question was, if your heart stops, do you want us to res resuscitate you? You want to talk about a sobering question. But the time that had passed since July of 97, my faith is very different. My faith is very different today And what came to my mind were passages like Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I thought of all my brethren who were praying for me and didn't even know yet that I had a blood clot in my lung and just how serious that it was. I didn't even know that part yet. But I could face that, knowing that I had the love of my brethren, the prayers of my brethren, but more importantly, I have a faith that no matter what happens in this life, it's not the end. Faith is important to each one of us. And I encourage each of you here, 
young or old, to go back and reconsider some of the teachings that I think are all too often neglected that cause the young to think that for some reason faith is easy for us as we get older. You who are older, I'm not saying that you should go out and just broadcast and proclaim all that you've struggled with in your life. Listen, it took me years before I could have ever come close to standing up here and revealing what I did today before my brethren. But I've come to realize sometimes the younger ones need to know we're not paying lip service to the fact that we've gone through struggles and difficulties in our lives. We really have. And they need to know that. They need to be able to look to us for guidance. That's why that the Apostle Paul wrote that in Titus chapter 2. We're not going to read that, but I encourage you to go back and read Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Older sisters, older brethren, teach, admonish, instruct those who are younger. Younger ones, submit to that teaching and instruction. Your faith will grow. The church will grow. Your love for God will become greater and greater. And though you may face those days, and I'll, I'll tell you now, there are days when it's still dark. But there's not a day that goes by today where I ever wish I found those slugs. Ever. Because I know what the consequences of that would have been. Have faith that is demonstrated in your life. And when you begin to feel weakness, talk to your brethren. Pray to God. As our brother has admonished us, read the word of God. Draw strength from it. Faith is something that we cannot replace with anything. I encourage you, build your faith. I appreciate the opportunity again. Wow, so